that's today's book that you're looking at. It's called Walter the Farting Dog. I chose this book because of the title. I thought, it sounds like it's got to be a really funny book. The author of our book today is William Codswinkle and Glenn Murray, and the illustrator is Audrey Coleman. So it's called Walter the Farting Dog. Here's a picture of Walter before he came to live with the family. He doesn't look too happy there, does he? And here's the title page. And you can see what Walter's doing there. Uh-oh. Let's find out what happens. Betty and Billy brought Walter home from the dog pound. Nobody wanted him, said Billy. But we love him, said Betty. Well, he smells awful, said their mother. I think you better give him a bath. Sounds like a good idea. And they just did exactly what mother told them to do. Mother walked in and said, He still smells awful. And that's when they got the first clue, the telltale bubbles in the water. He's probably just a little nervous, said Mother, hopefully. His stomach must be upset. But Walter's stomach wasn't upset. Walter's stomach was just fine. He felt perfectly normal. He just farted a lot. He did it when he bathed. He did it when he played with Betty and Billy. He did it when he walked around the house. He did it in the dining room. He did it in the kitchen. And he did it in his sleep. That dog farts morning, noon, and night, said Father. Can't help it, Daddy, said Betty and Billy. They didn't mind Walter's farts. So what if he farts, Billy said to Betty when they were alone in their room with Walter. Betty agreed. Walter agreed, too. He sat there, looking innocently around, farting. Take him to the vet, said Father. So that's what they decided they better do. And do you know what a vet is? The word vet is short for veterinarian, and a veterinarian is who takes care of animals. It's a doctor for animals. And this was what he diagnosed. Farting, said the vet, or rectal flatulence as we say in the medical profession. And he prescribed a change in diet. They gave Walter every kind of dog food. He farted. They tried him on cat food. They gave him hot dogs, hamburgers, and lettuce and tomato sandwiches. They gave him fried chicken. They gave him rabbit food. They made him a vegetarian. No matter what that dog eats, he turns it into farts, roared Father. Walter got the blame for everyone else's farts, too. If Uncle Irv let one slip, he just went and stood near Walter. Then all he had to say was, Walter, and everyone would look at poor Walter. That Uncle Herb was playing a trick on everybody, blaming it on Walter. Do you know who, anybody who does that? 
He has to go back to the pound, said Father. No, Daddy, please, begged, begged Betty and Billy. Don't send Walter away. He goes tomorrow, said Father. They pleaded. Walter farted. It was all over. That night, Betty and Billy cried in their beds, and Walter looked at them unhappily. Oh, Walter, said Betty, you've got to stop farting, because Father is going to send you back to the pound tomorrow, said Billy. Oh, that's sad. Walter doesn't want to go back to the pound. Walter knew how serious the situation was. He'd never see Betty and Billy again. He resolved to hold in his farts forever. When Betty and Billy fell asleep, he walked down to the kitchen to see if there was anything around to eat. He managed to open the cupboard door with his nose and found a 25-pound 20 bag of low-fat dog biscuits the vet had prescribed for him which had made him fart even more. Even though he knew they made him fart more, even though he knew they made him fart more, even though he knew they made him fart more, he couldn't resist. He ate the entire bag. Mmm, very tasty, said Walter to himself. Man, that's a lot of dog biscuits to eat. And then he went and lay down on the sofa. A gigantic gas bubble began to build up inside him. This is gonna be trouble, he said to himself nervously. He was afraid of what might happen if he let it go. He thought maybe the house would explode, so he kept it in. It wasn't easy. In fact, it was torture. But he had resolved never to fart again. His future depended on it. As he lay there with his tail wrapped tightly between his legs, he heard a noise at the window. There's Walter, oh, trying so hard to hold it all in. I wonder what that noise was that he heard. watched the window open slowly. A pair of burglars came through. They dropped silently into the kitchen. Watch out for the dog, said one of the burglars. He won't bite, said the other. He's a wimp. Walter might have bitten them, except he was so filled with gas he couldn't move. They tied a rag around his snout so he couldn't bark. Okay, whispered the first burglar. Let's clear the place out. They took everything they could get their hands on. Walter wanted to stop them, but he was having unbearable gas pains. He rolled on his back and waved his paws in the air. He gnashed his teeth. We've got it all, said the second burglar. Let's go. That's when Walter let it fly. It was the worst of his life. It made a tremendous noise and shot him across the room. A hideous cloud filled the air. The burglars clutched their throats, unable to breathe. With tears in their eyes, they raced for the window. They tried to grab their bag with all the valuables in it, but their arms were too weak. Let's get out of here. They jumped out of the window and ran up the block, choking and gasping for air. Still blinded by Walter's attack, they stepped into the headlights of an approaching police car. Hold it right there, said the policeman. Mm. Wonder 
what's going to happen next. When father and mother came down in the morning, they found the open window. And they saw the bag with their valuables in it. And Walter was sitting beside it. He still had the rag tied around his snout. You'd have to say he looked heroic. He saved the silverware, cried Mother. He saved the VCR, cried Father. Good dog, Walter. You're our dog, even if you do fart all the time. Oh, I bet that made Walter feel better. It makes me feel better. And so the family learned to live with Walter, the hero dog. And that's the end of our tale. Oh, Walter, I'm so happy he got to live with his family forever and ever after that. And here is something interesting. Walter had all that gas, so they were able to use his gas to turn to, to operate Walter's Wonder Park. Instead of ele using electricity to run the rides, they were able to use Walter's farts. <clears throat> well, that's pretty silly. I liked that book. It made me laugh. I liked the pictures. It had a lot of fun words in it. Did it remind you of anybody that maybe likes to fart a lot or farts a lot? I don't know. I hope you liked it. Bye.